Hey, what's going on YouTube and welcome back to all my cloud scholars out there. My name is Kieran Tross. I want to thank you for allowing me to be a part of your day. In today's episode at the Cloud Scholars Podcast, uh, we're going to talk about what happened at MGM Grand and the ransomware attack that they're still facing up to now. It has been five days during the, the recording of this video. It's five days now that they're down and it's extremely unfortunate, but there is a lot of learning opportunities to come out of this situation. So I want to start off by talking a little bit about one of the articles I read, and this is from ABC News. And what they're stating here is um, five days after cyber, cyber attack crippled operations at MGM Resort International, included its signature Las Vegas properties, the Bellagio and the MGM Grand. The company said Thursday morning it is still working to resolve issues as another major resort operation, Caesar Entertainment, acknowledged it was also the target of a cyber attack. Now, this is extremely, uh, this is extremely unfortunate because imagine you spent about, I don't know, uh, six months to save up to go to Vegas for a birthday party, some type of event, and then next thing you know, your check-in process is horrendous. You know, the computers are down. You can't get into your room because the room key is associated with some type of a computer system, and that has been hacked, and they're dealing with a ransomware attack. They have, they have lost a ton of money due to this issue, and not even just what they've lost within these five days. We've also got to take into account of what's going to happen to their reputation and how much they're going to lose moving forward because some people will say, oh, well, I'm not going to stay there because they're, they, they don't do security too well. I don't want to give my credit card information. I'm going to go somewhere else. These are the type of things that happen with cyber attacks. It's not only about what you deal with during the time frame of the cyber attack and how much more money you lose there, but your reputation moving forward also takes a hit as well. So let's talk a little bit about who's responsible for this. So we're still a lot of information coming out, but ABC News has a group called ALPHV, also known as Black Cat, is allegedly behind the MGM cyber attack. Now, since there's still a lot of information coming out, uh, one thing that has been consistent is that the issue is because of social engineering. So what I want to do for the rest of this video is talk about social engineering and then talk about what we can learn from social engineering and then also what opportunities that we can gather from what happened here at MGM Grant. So what is social engineering? So there's different types of social engineering. There's, vish, there's phishing, vishing, baiting, quid pro quo, and tailgating. So the first one, phishing, this is a type of email scam where the attacker sends a message that appears to be from a legitimate source such as a bank or credit card company. The message often contains a link that, when clicked, takes the victim to a fake website that looks like a real website. Once the victim enters their personal information on the fake website, the attacker can steal it. So phishing attacks are very common. You know, I spent uh, over seven years working as an IT director. I used to send out phishing attacks to the organization. These were test attacks, and I would see who clicked on them. So I would be able to get a tally, like Office 365, you were able to do that. And you can see exactly who clicked on it. And then once they click on that uh, email, what happens is now you need to now go through some type of education. So this way, moving forward, you know not to click on emails from people you don't know. So that's what comes with phishing. Uh, when it comes to baiting, uh, this is a technique where the attacker leaves a USB drive or other device in a public space. The device may contain malware that can be installed in the victim's computer when they plug it in. Then there's quid pro quo. Uh, it is a technique where the attacker offers the victim something in exchange for their personal information. Then there's tailgating. This is a technique where the attacker follows the victim into a secure area, such as a building or office. But I want to really focus on vision because this is what uh, seems to be what caused the issue with MGM Grand, right? So this is a type of phone scam where the attacker calls the victim and pretends to be from a legitimate source, such as a bank or credit card company. So if I was to be a hacker, right? And I wanted to hack into your system. The one that I would choose would be phishing. Phishing attacks are something that happens a lot as well. But the reason why phishing attacks wouldn't be so ideal for me is because there are a lot of different systems out there that are going to filter out those type of emails so that this way they keep the organization safe. So it's a little bit harder to do phishing attacks. Now, vision is something that's a little bit easier. So how would I go about hacking your system? So the one, some of the methods to gain access is, one, I go on LinkedIn. I go on LinkedIn, and I find my victim. And I say, okay, that's who I'm going to choose. 
once I found my victim, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, who works with that individual? So I might find somebody who works in finance or I might find somebody who works in payroll because I'm like, you know what? I need to send the email to that person and have them redirect some information, the uh, banking and routing information to this new location so that this way when they get paid, I get paid. And then how do I go about doing certain things like that? And how do I go about getting into their account? Well, what I'll do is I'll go and call into their help desk. And when I call into their help desk, I'm going to act like the person I found online so that this way I can now get their routing information switched over or I get into their account and send the email from their account to payroll and say I want to modify how my bills are, I mean, excuse me, my check is being deposited into my account. And just like that, I'm able to obtain all that information. So what can we learn from this, right? So now you understand the process and I'm only telling you this because I want you to be educated on how these things happen. So I'm coming to you from an ethical hacker standpoint, not telling you how to go and hack people. So I want to put that out there. But the reason why I want to bring this up is because you can learn from these different type of opportunities. So I want to kind of talk about a story to kind of get you in the right mindset when you get into cybersecurity. So one of the greatest preachers I've ever heard uh, is the late, great Dr. Miles Monroe. And one of the sermons that he had when he was talking was he mentioned two different men who were studying abroad. And they were in a country, I don't really remember the whole story, but just to kind of sum it up, they one, one man looked and saw that the people around him really didn't have shoes. And he was like, man, that's so sad. They don't have shoes. You know, this is horrible. And then the other guy said, Oh, wow, they don't have shoes. This is an opportunity. I need to create a phone, I'm excuse me, a, a, a sneaker company, a footwear company, and bring it over here so that I can now start selling shoes. And that's what I want you to take from what happened at MGM Grand. And the reason why I say that is because I recently had the opportunity to go to a, uh, a MBA conference, or the Black MBA conference in Philadelphia. And it was absolutely amazing. I met a ton of great individuals out there. And some of the questions I was asked by these uh, individuals out there and the students was, you know, hey, you know, Kieran, I'm trying to get into IT. I'm not really sure what to get into. I'm trying to get into cybersecurity. You know, I don't know exactly what lane to get into. And one gentleman in particular, his name was Anthony, a really smart brother, you know, had a, a bright future ahead of him. And me and him got into a whole conversation about you know what he should get into and what to look into and, and the response I gave to him was kind of like you know find out what you like but you don't know what you don't know so I want to be able to provide a better answer to that and this is one of the reasons why I'm going to create this video because if you look at what happened to MGM Grand you're looking into getting into cybersecurity is no it's, it doesn't benefit you any way by looking at this situation and seeing it come up on your Twitter feed and con and continue scrolling on no, what you need to do now is say, oh, this company got hacked. How did they get hacked? What caused it? Who caused it in the organization? Because you now need to remove the. I want to remove the veil from your eyes and, and, and allow you to start thinking as a cybersecurity professional. I don't look at these stories and say to myself, oh, OK, another company got hacked and continue with my day. I look at these stories and I go and say, OK, well, let me see from different articles, what caused that problem? How did they get hacked? Because they're going to make a statement, they're going to release exactly what happened. And from all the articles I read, it was social engineering. So as a cybersecurity professional, you know, what happened here was a misconfiguration of identities, a mishandling of identities. And the profession that comes and manages the identities for these organizations, organizations such as, you know, MGM Grand and many other organizations is a identity access management consultant or identity access management professional. Now, I have about 17 years working in IT and I worked as an identity access management consultant. And I've also worked in managing identities for about 14, 15 years of my career. And I still do it up to now. And, you know, what I want to do is kind of just go into and show you a diagram about what your responsibilities would be for identity access management uh, professional. So let's break this word down, identity access management. Um, so you, as an identity access management professional, what you're going to be doing, you're in charge of managing identities. 
Now, identities can be user identities. It could be you know, device identities. Essentially, they are digital identities. So if you have a Facebook login, you have a identity associated with Facebook. I can't come into your Facebook and say, hey, I can see all your friends. No, I can't do that because I have my own identity. Now, if I hacked your Facebook, then I'd be able to see all your friends and what's associated with your Facebook. You have an Instagram, you have a Gmail, you have a Yahoo. I can't now log into my Gmail and see your Google Drive documents. It wouldn't happen that way. You, your Google Drive documents are associated with your Google Drive documents. So for this diagram here, what we're doing is we have an identity, and this would be something for like a work organization. And that middle icon there is your Azure AD slash Microsoft Entre ID. And what that is, is going to be hosting, right? Housing all of the identities associated with that business. So you have your user who authenticates and then it has to authenticate that database, which is Azure AD Microsoft Entre. Once they authenticate, then that identity is assigned access to group one or maybe have access to group two. Men, remember, you're an identity access management. So you are, your responsibility is to manage how these identities access resources within the organization. Now, what happened at the MGM Grand is a threat actor, a hacker, called into the help desk, and the help desk, that third-party help desk, has access to those identities, the Azure AD Microsoft Entre. And what, what they did was they acted like somebody else and they were able to get the password reset and sign in under that identity, that person that they were impersonating. So as an identity access management professional, you are responsible for how people join an organization, right, onboarding, how people move in the organization, that is like promotions and move around the organization and their resources, and how people leave the organization. That is called joiner, mover, leads, lever. JML, JML process. And that is what you're responsible for. But you're also responsible for the security around that. So you're like, okay, if I, so what happened to MGM Grand, your clients are going to come to you and say, well, how do I make sure this doesn't happen to our organization? Or how do we prevent this from happening to our organization? So let's talk about some prevention methods that you can implement to make sure that your help desk doesn't get easily compromised like MGM Grand. So let's talk a little bit about prevention methods. So are the people answering the calls use identity verification protocols? Is the organization using knowledge-based authentication, address, date of birth, employee ID? Have we incentivized time for security protocols and support? So let's talk about those. Uh, the, is the organization using knowledge-based authentication? Let me talk a little bit about that. So. It's important that when you're onboarding staff into an organization that you make sure that people have some type of information that the help desk can use to verify who they are. One that I like is the employee ID, because if you don't know your employee ID, I won't make any changes. I won't reset your account. That is one way a, a hacker. I can go on and go on your LinkedIn, find out who you are, who you work with. But there's no way I'm going to know your employee ID. So those are preventative methods that you can implement in your organization and you can provide this strategy when you become an identity access management consultant or you get into cybersecurity. Now you have that knowledge that I provided to you so that this way you can provide this to your clients because this will make them feel like, oh man, you know, we never thought about this and that you are providing them a great service so that they feel like they are getting their money well spent. Have we incentivized time for security protocols and support? So when it comes to support, and I manage a help desk for over seven years, it's extremely important when it comes to support that you take into consideration that security parameters need to be put in place. A lot of times we're thinking about, you know, how long did a ticket, how long was the ticket open? We're looking at that resolve time, which is important as well because you want to be able to say your help desk or your support desk is doing a great job. But we also need to take into account that if even if a ticket, if somebody was on the phone for 15 minutes, the first two minutes were really about gathering the information. How long did the issue happen? Who is it affecting? You know, is it only happening at this site? But then you also have to take in the fact that they need to now verify who that person is. And depending on the person on the other end of the phone, 
it may take a little bit longer because they may not remember their employee ID or they may have to look at a phone and get a text message and they may not be good with the phone. There's a lot of different things. But we need to make sure that we're incentivizing the security protocols in support. So I know I mentioned a lot in this video. You know, you know, we talked about what happened to MGM Grand. You know, we also talked about the social engineering, mentioned to you exactly how to look at you know, challenges as you know opportunities, and then talked about you know the job that really plays a role in making sure that these issues don't happen or prevent these issues from happening. So uh, we reached the end of the video. I want to thank you if you're still here watching this video with me. Like all my videos, I like to end with a positive note. And the positive note for this video is one opportunity used wisely can change your life dramatically. So when you do see a problem, don't always look at them as a problem, but look, at, look behind it and say, okay, what can I take from that issue and learn from it? And that is something that is very important. And what I'm saying to you is this is an opportunity for those who are looking to get into cybersecurity to say, okay, there is a pathway there and it's identity access management. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave it in the comment section. I'm more than happy to answer that question or any issues for you. Um, I want to thank you again for watching this video. Once again, my name is Kieran Tross and this is the Cloud Scholars Podcast. And my goal here is to get you from scholars, consultant, and of course, consultant to expert. Thank you and see you next time. God bless. Mm -hmm.